I remember the first time that I went lake tubing. When your tube is tethered behind a boat, you pretty quickly understand that you need to constantly kind of redistribute your weight so that you're not flipped off of this tube into a tangled mess. The ride can be, you know, less pleasure cruise and more bull ride depending on the person that's piloting the boat that's churning up a wake and deciding your fate. Uh, besides the need to, to like shift your weight, what you have to be keenly aware of is what I call slack time. Now, I'm sure that there's a technical term for it or, or you would know it as something else, um, but slack time is this momentary calm where the tension on the tow rope goes kind of slack a little bit and there's this pause in the chaos of trying to stay on the tube. And it only takes one experience to like realize that, that this slack time is not the time to relax or loosen your grip. But slack time is caused by a change in the direction of the boat that then, you know, makes that tension on the rope kind of slacken a little bit. Um, and, and rather, that change in direction then comes rather quickly. You need to do a lot of kind of patient calculations in this slack time in hopes to stay on the tube when the tension increases and you're skimming across the water yet again uh, in this new direction if all goes well. But if you let your guard down or miscalculate um, during that slack time, you might result in the boat and your tube zooming away while you're clearing lake water out of your sinuses because it's flipped you off. And while the, the phrase slack time sounds like kind of a, a chill time, uh, it may even look like a relaxing moment in an intense situation. It really is a time to reorient yourself to a new direction because change is coming soon. Now, this weekend is Palm Passion Weekend. We're in the final week leading up to the cross and the crucifixion. It's Holy Week, and it's a time to celebrate, but also find the whole scope gamut array of mo emotions that happen in the last week of Jesus. The larger portion of our scripture today uh, in the, the common lectionary includes what we call the triumphal entry. This is where people wave palms and throw down their coats to make a royal pathway for Jesus as he rides into Jerusalem. These folks thought that he was going to take a seat as the king, as the ruler that he's been kind of lifted up to be. Sure, his trusty steed was a donkey and not a war horse. And the delegation was made up of fishermen and tax collectors rather than officials standing by his side. But still, Jesus was coming to liberate his people. Right? Now, yeah, there's this whole kind of you know, ragtag parade that we see, and it would have been fun to be part of things. Um, and it's clear that it involved this time of Passover. And Passover becomes this kind of slack time. There was a change in direction about to happen, which Jesus inaugurates on that Passover meal. And so we're going to spend the bulk of our time in the upper room with Jesus and his disciples today as he makes it clear through this Passover meal that they're soon going to be in some uncharted waters and their direction was drastically going to change. Now, if we remember, Passover was perhaps the most high and holy day in the Jewish tradition. It was a time when the people would be forgiven and this meal was not just a reminder of where the people had been as God made a way for them, but the meal also enfolds them into God's ever-changing story that continues today. And so when Jesus took the bread and the cup and declared that these simple elements were his body and blood, it was like taking that boat in a new direction and the ramifications would soon be felt. Jesus knows the direction that he's going, and this new direction isn't just good news for the Jewish people, but for the whole entire world, those that were outside the covenant. This is a huge change of course. And I love this passage of scripture. This portion is, is monumental in its importance because Jesus takes a meal that was originally just for those Jewish people, those insiders, to be enfolded into God's story and he extends the table to include you and me. This change in direction isn't just a time to share crackers and grape juice, but it's a time to remind that each and every one of us has this slack time. 
It's to remind us that every time we come to the table, the power of the slack time moment that is here and that, that it allows this kind of fulcrum to happen is a change in everything. At this table, everything changes. And as we're at one of those slack time moments in the gospel, we've been invited to be active participants for what is to come. Because the slack is going to be taken out of that tow rope in a week when we discover the empty tomb. And the question is, will you be ready? Lent has been a time of preparation, but now is that fulcrum point at which we are starting that pivot and are you going to be ready? Will you have done the work in the slack time to be propelled into God's abundant future? Or will we literally miss the boat and be like some of the Pharisees, not seeing what new direction Jesus is taking us into? Here are a couple of things to kind of keep in mind as we do this slack work time and maybe some things that we can work in. And when we have these pivotal moments, these fulcrum moments in that slack time. Number one, the first thing that we want to do is that we don't belittle the places that we've been in the past that are being left behind. Jesus never disparages the Jewish law or way. He comes to fulfill the law, so he stands on this foundation of the first covenant in order to usher in this new covenant, this new direction through his eventual resurrection. Honoring the past will allow you to more fully live into this new direction because there's less remorse or resentment when we honor the fact that this new direction can only happen because of the old that has brought you this far. It's a gift. It's a blessing. Honor that old direction because it doesn't get invalidated by the new one that you are embarking on. Secondly, waiting for the right time uh, to make this new decision is hard, right? Like, like just... In this slack time, you also have to remember to breathe. Patience is a verb. Remember that. And now, at this point, I'm preaching to myself because I am terrible at waiting. I'm terrible at being patient. And there are a couple places in my life right now, in my personal discernment path, that it feels like I'm kind of shaking this magic eight ball, trying to discern where we're going. And all I keep getting are replies like that, that little you know, eight ball that says, reply hazy, try again, or ask again later, or can't predict now. Those like kind of middle of the road, like kick the can down the line type of answers. Like I want something now. But for a lot of times, that slack time happens because it's not the right time to make the adjustments. So gather your information, find those trusted voices, and hopefully you'll know when to make those adjustments as you get ready for this course correction and that, that tension goes out of the line in a way that propels us into something exciting. And finally, it may take some time to get used to this new direction, right? So if we're honoring the past of where we've been, but we're not getting stuck there, if we've waited on that right moment to make those course corrections and the decisions, now we finally say that we're on that new path, give it some time. It's not gonna happen in an instant, especially if it's like a big life change or, or something that you've been struggling with for years. It's not gonna be done in a 30 minute, you know, TV episode sized chunk it might feel like the wilderness, this new direction, because you haven't been there before. However, let's not mistake a garden for a desert simply because we don't know how to draw life from this new environment. Changes happen. Changes in the momentum are always challenging and perhaps the hardest part of change is that we face a lot of hard stuff right away because we feel like we're out of our element or we have just moved in a way that, that has taken up that slack time and we're trying to reorient ourselves to what a new course of action or standard operating procedure is. But, and I recognize this can be challenging and discouraging at times, but remember, there will be opportunities for adjustment down the line if we are patient and if we are willing to trust that we are now on a path that can bring light, bring life, and that can bring new opportunities. And so on this Palm Passion Weekend, as we sit in the upper room, as we see these simple elements of bread and cup, as we, as we make it so that we can then see Jesus in a new way in this slack time, 
And so friends, with that, may you discern wisely as you go through those changes of life so that we can be those people that God has in store for us, changing course when needed, so that then we can make an impact to transform this world as a place of hope and connection rather than isolation and anxiety. Let's pray. God of grace, we give you thanks for the way in which you remind us that that slack time is not do nothing time, but that we can make adjustments, that we can wait, that we can honor the past and that we can then boldly and confidently and maybe with a little bit of a white knuckle grip, move into that new preferred future that you have for us as you steer us, as you guide us into that new future full of hope and connection. In your son's name, amen.